I've come here today on the Royal Enfield Classic 350 and I'm going to tell you in this video why I think it's one of the best back road new motorcycles in the world today. It's a very beautiful looking motorcycle and it doesn't look at all out of place in this stunning landscape. And the classic looks and the style go beautifully with anything that is equally as beautiful. I've taken my time getting to this spot today, a couple of hours of riding, just enjoying the beautiful scenery, looking left, looking right, stopping here, stopping there. And this is the perfect bike to do that on. You see, this bike doesn't have tons of torque and power but that's what makes it such a good back road bike because when you've got a very powerful motorcycle you're always holding back that power so when you're riding on the little narrow lanes where you don't know what's around the next bend or over the next brow it makes riding those sort of roads very unpleasant sometimes but on this you can forget about all that and just look at the scenery and enjoy every mile. This 350cc single cylinder engine produces 21 brake horsepower at 6,100 RPM, 27 newton meters or 20 foot pounds of torque at 4,000 RPM. And on paper, that doesn't sound very much at all, does it? But in the real world, it's perfectly okay. And for the back road riding, it's absolutely all you need. I've purposely taken this bike up some very steep hills to test how much torque it has and whether in the real world someone with significant weight can get up a hill and it can. It pulls up the hills very nicely indeed. First gear, second gear, uh, on the hills, and I'm talking hills like that, it won't accelerate or power up like a bigger capacity bike, but it will certainly pull its way up and not bog down. So you don't need to worry about that at all. views aren't they magnificent today i'm in the snowdonia national park in wales and it's a beautiful place so i'd highly recommend you come here to explore if you like these sort of roads the weather today is a little bit showery it's one of those days where you're going to get showers but you don't know where unfortunately on the way here i was caught in a bit of a downpour um, but that gave me a chance to test the mud guards, and I've talked about that in many videos, but these beautiful classic mud guards that cover the whole wheel like that are so practical. Not only I think they look very nice indeed, I really do like them, but the bike, after riding through uh, mucky roads in the wet, is pretty clean to be honest. They do function very well, and a lot of modern bikes need to take note of that because function is very important as well as design. And these old fashioned mud guards, they got it right in the 60s and they're right now. This bike, as you see it, is 4,619 pounds, brand new in the UK. And obviously check the prices in your country. But that's a cheap bike, isn't it? You can uh, find a very decent second hand classic bike for at least that amount of money if it's been restored or more, far more. So it really does hold its own. And if you took this bike to a classic motorcycle meet, 
and people were walking around, they would look at it and say, wow, that's a lovely bike. And, and people would think it's from the 1960s because it looks like that. This is really a classic motorcycle that's just got enough modern technology to make it reliable in the real world. And it feels like riding a proper classic bike. Um, the exhaust sounds really lovely. I got, it makes a lovely tone. Um, I was thinking before I got back on it, I hadn't ridden it for, for over a year. Um, you know, you could change the, the exhaust pipe and get a louder pipe, but actually it sounds quite loud, perfectly loud enough to be honest. If I do have one criticism of this bike, it's the throttle is a little bit uh, delayed, so on and off. So if you throttle off, it then does it. If you throttle on, it does it. It's, it's a sort of split second between you doing it and the bike reacting to it. And in a situation where you're coming around a bend and there's something there and you throttle off, and for a moment the bike's still pulling, that can be a little disconcerting. Now that's probably down to mapping because they have to get it through all these EU tests and what have you. Um, I'm sure they could make it not do that, um, but I'm pretty sure that's the reason why. So if you've got one of these and you had that problem that I mentioned with the throttle on and off, tell me if you managed to solve it. When you come somewhere like this, you don't want to be worrying about running out of fuel and this bike is so economical. It does 107 miles per gallon, that's UK miles per gallon, or 89 USA miles per gallon. So you can go a long way between fill-ups. There aren't really many motorbikes you can buy today, brand new, that look this classic. Let's go through the bike from front to back. Like I said, you've got these beautifully functional mud guards that work very well, lovely spoked wheels, disc brakes that work perfectly fine, for a bike like this. You've got a very classic designed headlamp uh, with a little cap there to, to uh, I guess, to reflect some of the light back down to the road. And you've got a lovely instrument uh, analog speedometer there with a, a few functional bits and pieces in there. Very nice looking. Lovely tank full of petrol, that's what you need, not electricity. Uh, beautiful exhaust pipe. The catalytic converter is hidden behind that. Uh, single cylinder engine, beautifully made, beautiful, beautiful design, beautiful casings, all shiny, all lovely. A uh, little panel you can open at the side there to get to your battery and bits and pieces either side. One's the air filter, one's the battery and the electrics. Uh, it's got twin shock suspension, a couple of grab handles there, a rear seat which can be removed. Nice metal rear mud guard and a little frame support there that if you have a bag on the back, stop it hitting the wheel as you go along. Beautifully designed bike. You can get them in all sorts of colors. There's a color for everybody. Uh, I quite like the look of the military ones, the signals versions, um, but the engines are blacked out on that. And I love the shiny bits on the engine. So for me, I'd go for one of the shiny ones, this or the red one. It's very, very beautiful indeed. Now that brings me on to the point that design in the past, used to be very much a combination of practicality and style all in one. Today, um, it's, a, it's apparent to me that people go to design college or university and they learn how to design, but they've never experienced the practicality side of things. So they come up with a, a crazy design for something, whether it be a motorcycle or a kettle or a cheese grater, but they don't really know how to use one. And that shows in their design because these old fashioned looking bikes function so well, yet they're beautiful at the same time. And that's very important. And that's something that is very much lost in today's world.
Now, I'm becoming very nostalgic lately, and for good reason. I've seen the world in different times to what they are now, um, and people of my generation will understand that. I can remember when you would be in a village in the countryside, in my case, uh, Danbury in Essex, and you'd get two or three cars going through a day. And you'd see the people in the orchards picking apples, you know, 30 people picking apples, putting them into beautiful wooden boxes and taking them off. And you'd have Mrs. Smith's uh, shop on the green and people would go in there and buy their things. There weren't supermarkets in those days. I can remember that just about when I was a kid. And now everything is press a button and instant results. And that's a shame in a way because the world was different. It was more laid back. There were less people. It was quieter. It was prettier. And unless you've come from the past, like I have, and I was born in the wrong era. I should have been born five or six hundred years ago. I think I'd have been much happier, even though there weren't motorbikes, but I'd be on a nice horse. Uh, times are changing. And I think you'll probably agree, not for the better. Now, there's a few drops of rain in the air now. These clouds are quite dark. I was hoping that they wouldn't drop any rain, but it looks like they're going to. But while I stand here and talk about the motorbike, there's this uh, red kite bird of prey swooping around. It's incredible to watch the way it flies and just changes direction, almost goes upside down when it changes direction. Just beautiful. When you've finished watching this video, have a look back at my first review I did of this bike about a year and three or four months ago. I loved it then and I love it now. It really is a brilliant bike. It's so different from the normal modern bikes that you get today. And I think all the better for it. It's beautiful, it's stylish, sounds really nice, it goes beautifully. It's the perfect back road bike for exploring the world, getting off the motorways, and it's brilliant. It will go on the motorways, it will do 70 miles an hour to push, 75. Um, but it's not a bike that you want to be caning it down the motorways, crunching miles and miles. Of course you can. If I was going to take this on a long journey to go somewhere like this, and I didn't live so nearby, yeah, I'd go on the motorway, but I would sort of cruise at 60 miles an hour and take my time and stop off here and there when I felt like it. It's not a bike you want to crunch the miles on. Um, but on a bike like this, you have to change your mentality. You know it's not super powerful and super fast, so you make allowances for that and you ride it differently. And once you've got that mindset, you'll really understand what this bike is all about. And it is fantastic.